Hey there everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel. Now thanks to all the fantastic support from you guys recently, I've been able to put a little bit of money to one side and save up and make a new Astro related purchase. And the thing that I've bought myself is this, it's a B-Link U59 mini PC. Now there's loads of these mini PCs available on Amazon where I got this one from. But kind of the reason I settled upon this one in particular after checking around for a few hours is basically that this comes with the latest refresh Intel Celeron, which is an N5095 series processor, I think. Most of the competition around this price bracket came with the 4000 series alternative, which is still a great processor, as I understand from reading online. Um, but this was a little bit faster. I checked the benchmarks and I thought... Why not have the kind of newer one for roughly the same sort of price as they've just sort of came out and refreshed this model. Uh, another interesting thing about this one is that it runs on anywhere from 12 to 19 volts. So I'm going to be powering this with my uh, Nevada regulated power supply through kind of a splitter. It turns one male 5.5 by 2.1 output into four of us, I think is the splitter that I bought. Uh, so that's going to be perfect for powering my camera, dew heater for the secondary mirror, uh, fan for the primary mirror, and also one of them is going to go into the back of the unit here, just through this little elbow joint. Now, I didn't buy this for any sort of strain relief purposes. I just found that um, basically the splitter that I used, the one into four, um, didn't like to be plugged into this thing's uh, jack. So... I found that one of the old um, elbows, which I've got right here, is a 5.5 by 2.5, I do believe, male, and that fitted a lot better. I think it's just quite a, a tight fitting port, so uh, it needed that bit of extra wiggle room. Um, this one comes with four full speed USB 3 ports on it. There's two HDMIs, a network port on the back. I won't be using the HDMIs or the network port, I want to keep it all wireless as there's just completely uh, zero chance of cable tangling then there's two more full speed usb 3s on the front and a usb c and a headphone jack i don't know why you'd want that for astronomy at least but uh, at least it's there if you want to take it inside and do anything else with it have it a multi-use unit another kind of cool thing i thought about this one is that it, it does have kind of active cooling it's a very quiet little fan but at least there's no chance at all uh, when it's outside that it's going to overheat and perhaps thermally throttle itself uh, and there's zero vibration from that fan as well, I'm happy to report. A bad point is it's an absolute fingerprint magnet. I have to say, you just you, you can't keep your fingerprints off it. Perhaps it'd probably even get fingerprints if you used medical gloves when handling it. <laughs> but it is what it is. It's just part of the design. Um, it also comes with kind of like a small Visa mounting bracket. This is not it. This is an Arca Swiss kind of a small dovetail plate thing, which is how I like to keep uh, the ASI Air that I've previously using on the telescope and um, with just a few small holes drilled into the bracket i was able to use the two screws provided and kind of use that as a stiff mounting point it seems to hold onto the pc just fine and uh, there's no chance of it wiggling three or, or anything like that really now i was really inspired to look into these things further by a video recently from queeve the lazy geeks channel if you haven't checked him out then really you should correct that right now and go check him out because uh He's the least lazy astronomer, I think, on YouTube. Um, he's constantly pointing out new videos and testing things out with new content in all in a really quality presentation. So uh, absolutely hats off to you. Um, but basically, it inspired me to look in, into these little systems a bit more because I've been using the ASI Air exclusively for a while now. I'd completely gone away from the laptop indeed because there's problems I was having with connections and things like that. Um, but, you know, knowing that such a kind of reliable, trustworthy source as Queeve was having a really good time with his mini PCs made me kind of pause and think, this is definitely something I could really do with looking into for a few reasons, which I think I'm going to get into right now. Now, I've still obviously got the ASI Air, I bought this thing, I absolutely love it. It's going to still be getting regular use too, mainly probably on the second rig if all this goes to plan. But I'm still going to be making content for it, uh, and I really, really do recommend it to anybody who's kind of already got ZWO gear and is interested in this kind of thing, because it's just flawless. It works, everything it sets out to do it just does without a hint of trouble. And uh, I can really respect that in a device, especially in a hobby that's so already got a baseline level of complexity that's uh, fairly high. So anything that kind of makes things easier and lowers barriers to entry as i sometimes mentioned really does get 
two thumbs up, in my book at least. Now, one of the things the ASAR can't really do, which uh, is a bit of a downside for me because it's something I really like, is lucky imaging. It's just really not set up for that kind of thing, at least not deep sky lucky image. I, I can do planetary and lunar and things like that with it just fine, but deep sky lucky imaging is a bit more of a niche thing and it really is more well suited to PC based software. It's something I'd really like to explore a little bit more and maybe also some PC based EAA. There's also a lot of software packages that if I kind of just stick using solely the ASA Air uh, alone, I'm not going to be able to explore them and bring you guys content from them. So uh, I think what I'm trying to say is basically without getting too long winded about this is that I'm sort of worried that I could end up pigeonholing myself by accident by constantly just using the ASIA and only ZWO branded things of that kind of nature so hopefully the little mini PC here is going to open things up a lot more for me there and I can use things from any manufacturer again and uh, that could lead to some interesting videos I hope. So the reason I opted for a mini PC rather than kind of using my laptop or anything like that again is because honestly the last few times I tried out my laptop uh, I was getting constant connection issues and things like that and I know that your mileage will vary with that kind of thing there's probably be loads of people indeed me as well for a good long while I had no problems with connection uh, but when they start plaguing you they, they really don't seem to go away now I think looking back uh, I was kind of asking for trouble because I was using a long unpowered USB um, extension cable which high speed cameras don't really like that kind of thing and even worse to kind of compound on that fact is I was also powering things uh, through a USB hub which again is asking for trouble with these uh, modern cameras and things like that I know I had no trouble in the past back when I was using uh, an old CCD from Attic and things like that but that is not these and uh, it's just a totally different set of variables so one of the other reasons for kind of wanting to switch over to mini pc rather than just go back to the laptop aside from all the connectivity issues and things like that even if i could iron all of those out is after being spoiled to be honest spoiled rotten by the asi air um being able to attach everything into this one little device all at once uh do your cable management properly do it just like once really well and uh, not have to worry about cable snags and binds during meridian flips and all those things that kind of just sit there in the back of your mind or at least they did for me uh this eliminated all of those and uh, that's one of the other reasons like i say that i don't want to go back to the laptop and having cables hanging down and things like that uh, it just works so much better having something that can live on the telescope permanently so that's why I've set up the mini PC in that way too it's going to kind of just live on the back of the Newtonian riding piggyback and uh, the only things I have to plug in are just two cables each time one for the power and just one USB for the mount so one of the things I thought I'd just touch upon before I go off the subject um, is the difference between connecting these two uh, up so of course the ASI Air, I always used to use it with its own hotspot. It makes its own hotspot and you connect to that directly. It kind of has nothing to do with your home internet or anything like that unless you're using it in, uh, I think it's bridge mode where it connects to your router and then you connect to your router with your tablet or phone or whatever. And that speaks with the ASI Air. For some people, that's a better option. Uh, for me, the better option was to just connect direct to this thing's hotspot. You can't do that with a mini PC. This has to connect to your home network kind of thing and uh, for me at least back when i was using the laptop all the time uh, i was used to put it somewhere where i had a line of sight to the home router and that kind of circumvented most connection issues but you, you can't really guarantee that you're going to be able to do that with this mount to the telescope because inevitably at certain points of the sky uh, let's say for instance on my Newtonian scope this is mounted to the back of it um, it's going to be kind of blocked literally physically by a metal tube right in the way of the signal and it does make a difference and uh, i've kind of had patchy connection at certain times uh, i didn't really have much time to check things out as i mentioned because the weather was just crap but um i did have patchy signals at times and i've looked into how to sort that problem out and it looks like i've basically got to buy a wi-fi mesh system or a booster of some kind so that's what i've done it's not actually arrived yet i'm still waiting for that to come but um hopefully that's going to solve any kind of dead zones that i have outside i do have weak wi-fi outside um your mileage may completely vary with this you may have really strong wi-fi 
in your own home? Uh, I don't, so <laughs> I had to opt for a booster, which I hope is going to solve uh, slight connection issues with this. 90% uh, of the time, it was perfect, but 10% of the time or so, when I was pointing in just the right direction to uh, block this thing's line of sight, it got a little bit patchy and uh, it could be frustrating, so I just thought it was worth mentioning. So I hope that kind of explains where I'm coming from with this. Uh, as I've said, I just don't want to kind of pigeonhole myself by accident into just one particular brand, one particular ecosystem constantly, every single video, as I think it'd probably get fatiguing for you guys watching, and I think it'd probably get fatiguing for me too, as I'm trying to create content that I like to make and hopefully you like to watch. And, uh, you know, if you're just kind of using the same thing every single day, I mean, if you eat your favourite meal every single day, you'd eventually get bored of it, and... Uh, as they say, variety is the spice of life, and I think this has added a little bit of spice back into mine. I'm really excited uh, about things that I can do with this system and share with all you guys at home. Now, I know I've gone on and on at this point, and I want to kind of wrap things up in here and get my gear set up, because it's actually set to be clear for a few hours tonight. Um, it's going to be very windy, so I can't do any kind of long exposure deep sky or anything like that, um, but that's fine, because I kind of don't want to do that right now. I, I instead want to do a little bit of deep sky EAA or maybe some lucky imaging, live stacking kind of things. That's something that really has interested me for, for years indeed. I was kind of getting myself excited by looking through old images uh, what I'd taken in the past using EAA methods and, uh, and live stacking and things like that. And yeah, it's just something I'm interested to get started again with and tonight seems to be a perfect opportunity to uh, really just test things out if nothing else. So. Uh, Without any more ado, hopefully, uh, I'm going to get things set up and I'll see you again back outside. Well, I'm outside and it took until about half past 12, just looking at the clock there, um, till it finally cleared up. These clouds took a lot longer to clear than they uh, were forecast, so it's mostly okay now. And I decided to quickly jump onto NGC 40, I do believe it is. It's like a little cherry red coloured uh, planetary nebula and I'm going to shoot that for a little bit of a time and uh, it's probably going to head into the roof of the house and I'll lose that in a moment but um, I think after that I may just jump round to Orion over there and take a quick live stack of the car of that and just take a quick look at how things are running. Um, tonight for these settings while well, I'm just playing around with things um, I'm running really quite high gain I think I'm at about 500 total and I'm just using two second exposures for everything. Um, I am using a region of interest crop of the sensor of the 2600 as well, just a 1920 by 1080 um, crop. And I'm also live stacking everything with just some flats being subtracted on the fly, no darks or anything like that. Uh, and I should mention this bias as well. Sharp cap can, op uh, sharp cap can automatically take bias along with uh, your flat frames when it's making a master for you. So. Um, Unfortunately, the connection on the laptop out here, um, it's not letting me stay connected quite so well that I could actually show you it on the screen tonight. So instead, I'll just pop the images up on the on the screen and hopefully you'll get an idea of what it's like. Hopefully, that uh, little Wi-Fi booster should arrive in the next couple of days, the next session out. Um, I'll be able to show you like a like to on the laptop screen there. Anyway, since I can't really show you too much tonight while I'm just imaging uh, on the fly there, I think I'm going to keep this kind of short and leave it round about here. So, uh, yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed seeing this little mini PC get its first little bit of use. I'm hoping to do quite a lot more with it as long as I get this Wi-Fi resolved and uh, get it strong enough out here that it's suitable for making uh, content, video content with, which I hope it will be. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about it for this video. So... As always, thank you all very much indeed for watching. A huge thank you to all my YouTube channel members and to just everybody watching in general. So uh, I think with that said, that's about it for tonight. And until next time, clear skies.